Welcome to Remake This Movie Rights Season 2, 2016 Closing Episode. This is our best of episode where we're going to talk about some of our favorite episodes, and we're going to play some of the trailers from those episodes. And if you stick around to the very end, you're going to hear me, your host, Aaron Peterson, attempt to remake one of Wayne Henderson's own trailers right. That's right. It's an interesting episode, and I think it's a lot of fun. As Wayne Henderson and Troy Heinrichs join me to celebrate 2016, a very successful year, as we close up Season 2 and look ahead to Season 3 of the show. If you haven't already, please leave us a review on iTunes or whatever podcast app you use. It really does help the show as we try to find our audience and grow and grow and grow as the show goes on. Without further ado, let's get into the best of 2016. Remake this movie right. <laughs> Hello, my fellow cinematic architects, and welcome to Remake This Movie Right. If you are a member of the Hollywood Outsider Network, you can listen to episodes of Remake This Movie Right on iTunes. Reviews are appreciated. Your podcast app of choice, or just visit the website at RemakeThisMovieRight.com. Remake This Movie Right is a show that takes an original film that has an actual remake in the works. We figure out what still clicks and what doesn't. Throw a little bit of humor at it, and then we determine exactly how Hollywood should remake it. So by the end of each episode, we will have the remake ready to roll for Hollywood execs and present it to you in movie trailer form. We are here to tell Hollywood how to remake this movie right. I am your host, Darren Peterson, and joining me today is our voice actor extraordinaire, Mr. Wayne Henderson. Ah, it's good to be aboard. Aaron, thanks so much for having me on this uh, season-ending special. This is going to be fun tonight. It's actually odd when I don't hear music behind your voice. and little... <laughs> I forgot to cue it up. <laughs> bad, bad. Good morning. Uh, also joining us is uh, the full Heinrichs, Mr. Roboto himself, Troy Heinrichs. Beep bop, beep bop, boot. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for both of you guys coming on. Uh, you're both instrumental in how this podcast works, so I appreciate you both taking the time to to come on and, and kind of wrap up the season. What we are going to do for this episode is uh, we're going to wrap up season two of Remake This Movie Right by sharing uh, some of our regular host favorite episodes, uh, and Troy even came on to help introduce his. And we're also going to play the trailers from those episodes as well. So we've got several, uh, actually many, uh, trailers we're going to play, and we're also going to talk about why some of these were our favorite episodes and what we're going to do in Season 3. That's another uh, part of, of this little podcast. Well, since, since since Wayne's here, does that make it meta or an homage as we play these trailers? I'm just curious how that definition works. Ooh, that's a, that's a really good... You know what we should do is, Wayne, instead of actually playing the trailer, we should... Have Wayne do it all freestyle, like just <laughs> without a script. Yeah, just redo do it, it live. <laughs> like Wayne, just do what you remember what this movie ended up being. Let, let's hear what it was. <laughs> oh my goodness, we are doomed. Uh, <laughs> let me just say domo arigato to you and yours this festive holiday season, especially to you, Troy, because you're Mister Roboto. Yes. Uh, if you have not already, please be sure to subscribe to remake this movie right on your podcast app. It's very important. And I know it sounds stupid to remind people that are listening to a podcast, but you would be surprised how many people listen to a podcast and just click on an episode and don't subscribe. So they don't realize that if you don't subscribe, when we return in 2017, you might not even see the episode. You might not know we're back. We can't have that. So please subscribe. Please come back. The, and those first movies back are going to be big ones. Yes. So you don't want to miss them. Yes. We're going to talk about that here shortly. Don't give it away. Slow down. It's called a tease. <laughs> The uh, the podcast has grown a bit since last year. I, I just actually ran the numbers, and it has definitely grown. We did a lot more episodes, too, so that, that definitely uh, added to it. But every little bit of social sharing helps the podcast. So anything, you you know, Reddit's a big one these days. So if you can, if you see uh, people talking about a movie in Reddit and you want to throw a remake that we did for that movie in there, that would be great, or mention it on Reddit or, or Facebook or Twitter or whatever you use. That would be fantastic. And please, please review the show on iTunes and Google or wherever you're listening. It really, really does help the show. And I promise it only takes a minute. But people don't realize how much leaving a, a positive review for a podcast that you listen to really helps people discover the show. It really does. Are you guys ready for a few fun facts about what happened about this past season? Sure. Absolutely. And, and go and bring them on. All right. Uh, SS Wilson will return, by the way. He will come back in season three. I already talked to him. 
And uh, he, he really enjoys doing the show. But he was our first filmmaker to come on and actually remake his own movie, which I thought was great. That was in season one. He did came back and remade Short Circuit with us. And then this past season, season two, he came back and remade two movies that he wasn't affiliated with, The Howling and The Magnificent Seven. And, and I just want to mention what a fantastic, cool attribute that was, that he would come back and actually, you know, for people in Hollywood, they don't like to mess with other people's movies. And he's all for it. I mean, he's just, he's game. Next season, season three, he's going to see if he can get his writing partner from Tremors to uh, come on as well and also help us remake a movie. So I think that could be a lot of fun. And we're reached out to other filmmakers too. Now, do you guys want to know what our three most popular podcasts of the year were? Yes. All the ones that Wayne was on. <laughs> That's actually accurate. Yes, it is. Here to help. <laughs> Speaking of, here, let's do the math. Uh, Wayne is on all three of them, technically. Troy is on two of them, and I am on all three of them. So really, uh, I, I see it kind of in the denominator. I think it's uh, Wayne and I. We're magic. And Troy, you help. You help a little bit. I push the cart. <laughs> we'll take it. Here, in order, here are our three most popular episodes. Number three was Independence Day. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Buffy the Vampire and it, Slayer. And it was better than the actual remake. It was. <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which was uh, liked by Christy Swanson, actually enjoyed that episode. So that's kind of funny. And Stephen King's It was our number one podcast. The one that you, all three of us were on was the number one podcast of the year. I'm not surprised at the number one because we did do a bang up job on Stephen King's it. And there's such a buzz about Stephen King as well as the remake of it. That's actually happening. Don't mm -hmm. know if it'll be as good as our remake that uh, we will find out later, but I'm surprised to see Buffy, the vampire slayer in at number two. I was too, but I know uh, Christy Swanson actually Twittered it. Um, so I don't know if that helped, but I also, we were on uh, Whedon esque you know, that website Whedon esque that's a, a big Joss Whedon website. And they featured it there. I think uh, Kevin mm. Elder helped help with that. And that really uh, was greatly appreciated. And just a, fa a litany of factors. There's a lot of Buffy talk this year about a remake, you know, because of I think it was the anniversary of the show to some degree. I don't know if it was the or coming up or something, but there's a lot of talk about Buffy this year that got it got it noticed. Cool. In Independence Day, I think that was obvious. I mean, tying it in with the uh, the sequel the garbage sequel that came out Ugh. did you guys see it yet no <laughs> i'm not gonna watch that i scanned it does that count what does scan it mean i just because like i knew enough of it from you guys talking about it on your other podcast the hollywood outsider and i just kind of like flipped through it a little bit and i was like yeah no no i was done <laughs> but i watched about 10 minutes of it so that 10 minutes was 20 minutes too long Oh, let me tell you, it's not good. Not good. Our remake was way better. So much better. Okay, so lastly, several of the filmmakers and actors that were involved uh, have actually approved of episodes. I talked about Christy Swanson. and But most notably, Wesley Snipes actually liked our Blade episode, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, especially because if you listen to it, Zach does a pretty mean Wesley, not mean as in cruel, just mean, mean as in really funny Wesley Snipes impression. It was and, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Got a lot of raves. It was actually a pretty popular episode, too. So, But but Wesley Snipes liked that episode. I like that. Go, Wesley. I'll keep rooting for you, man. I want him to come back as Blade. Okay. Well, Starfighter F got some play, too, didn't it? Yeah. Me and Catherine Mary Stewart uh, commented on it, but it was like like weeks or months later or something. Yeah, she did yeah, quite, a while, quite a while after it. So, obviously, we need to just start sending these episodes out to the actors involved and saying, hey, guess what? So, let me ask you guys, uh, as... Wayne, you were on two episodes, but you primarily only come on if it's really a movie you're, you're passionate about or a property you're passionate about, which is really uh, – Stephen King's a, a big one for you. Yes. But as it, but you always listen to him, I, I assume. I absolutely listen to every episode. So what do you think as you as you hear it I'm, – I'm asking you from an outside perspective. What did you take from this season? Uh, what do you like? What do you don't – what you, what don't you like? Be as honest as you want. I just enjoy the whole concept of the show. And over the past two seasons, you, the whole gang has kind of really honed it and perfected the process. You know, the first few episodes of season one, some were a little choppy, but I still had a great time doing the trailers. <laughs> and a lot of them 
have been of movies that I've never even seen the original. I just don't see quite as many movies as maybe I should, but I do listen to every episode. And so I do have a feel for the movies and how to go about remaking them. So if I'm on another episode, maybe in season three, I'll have an even better idea of what to bring to the table, but it's just fun to listen to because you know that most of the remakes that are actually happening and are actually coming out 90% of them, pure garbage, like independence day Mm -hmm. and some others. I don't want to start any flame wars on the interwebs uh, by mentioning others, but you know who we're talking about. (laughs) So the episodes themselves are, almost always better than what the real remake is going to turn out to be. And I know if Troy's on an episode, somehow we're going to end up in space or have robots. (laughs) It's not just me. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone knows it's the truth. Full Heinrichs. Actually, we just recorded a podcast, which hasn't come out yet for Men in Black. And uh, Scott Clark came on for that one. And he actually referenced he was going to go full Heinrichs. I'm like, I think that's fantastic. that That's a thing now. It's a verb in the actual dictionary. <laughs> wow. I can't wait to see the t-shirt. Uh, I'm going to get one made. <laughs> so, uh, so in summary of, of what Wayne was saying, I heard if he comes on for a movie in season three, that he will not be doing any rabid baboons. Yeah. You don't really like when it goes goofy is what I'm getting out of that. When it just goes weird. I actually enjoy those as well. And if the episode goes goofy, I know that you're going to give me a stellar script to go totally off the wall for the trailer as well. So it's a win-win. Hey, and- what I love what I love about it though is that Wayne actually records these trailers without actually hearing the episodes. So he's got to be sitting there going like, "What the hell did these guys do?" And then he gets to hear it after the fact. I think that's hysterical. Uh, yes, especially some of those early ones when I didn't really know too much about how the show was going to come together. Uh, what was it, Jumanji? And that one was a lot of fun to do. And I couldn't wait to hear the full episode just to figure out what on earth are these items that are uh, mentioned in the trailer. <laughs> what is that like for you? I mean, as you, I know you, you've talked about, I think you talked about it last year, but for people that are newer to the podcast, what, what is it like for you to even put the trailer, explain how the process is. Cause I think people, some people actually think you record it at the same time as we do it. And, and no, it doesn't work like that at all. <laughs> Sometimes it might be best if we did, but you know, <laughs> time constraints and it all comes together. And Aaron uh, props to you for, always putting together really well written scripts that give me a good idea. And if there's any tonality, like if you want me to be extra ominous, or if you want me to go ahead and go off script and be silly, you let me know. And I always read through the script when I get it from you a few times, mull it over for a day or two, try to come up with ideas. And if I've seen the original film, I kind of have an idea where you might be going in the remake episode And then usually Friday evenings or Saturday afternoons, I come up in the studio and uh, just record a few different versions of it and try to see what one you might like best and kind of go from there. And there's been times where it's a really audacious episode that we're doing in the trailer. And so I'm extra loud in the studio. My wife will be in the hallway outside on the other side of the door. She can hear me and she's like, what is going on in there? <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Especially, I think it was it near the end of season one. I forget what movie the trailer was for, but you had me actually sing a few lines or my lame attempt at singing a few lines from the theme from Firefly. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Do you remember what, what, what movie that was, Troy? Do you remember? I don't. Ah, now I gotta go listen to that one. <laughs> I gotta yeah. go find it. Because my wife has never heard me attempt to sing before. Was she happy? (laughs) No, not so much. She wasn't even familiar with Firefly, so the whole thing was very confusing to her. (laughs) She's just like, what What happened to my husband? What happened to him? I just wanted him to serenade me once, and he's doing it for all these other people. (laughs) At least you picked a good song. Yeah, Yeah, you picked a good song. Can't take the sky from me. Let's go into season three stuff, and then we're going to talk about the actual episodes that we had a blast with. Uh, coming up on season three, which we have, we just locked on, locked up today, so there definitely will be a season three. And it's going to return on January 30th, so mark it on your calendar. We're taking a little bit of a sabbatical. You know, it's okay. Some people think podcasts can't take a break. I don't understand that. We did that last year, and it turned out fine. People came back. Uh, So we're going to do that. So again, please subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss an episode. We'll be back every other Monday. And uh, we actually took a a tally today 
to kind of take a vote from people. Hey, what do you think? Should we just do the first and 15th of every month or should we do every other Monday? And overwhelmingly, every other Monday one. What do you guys think about the teaser feedback episodes? I'm torn, to be quite honest. Mostly because, one, I think it's funny as all get out listening to you, Aaron, Mm -hmm. do those solo. I think those are the best ones. Because you try to like have these conversations with yourself, and I think it's absolutely hysterical. Um, Is that like in a sad psychosis kind of way, or it, totally like, dude? Does this guy have any friends? I mean, he's got to talk to all these people on the internet to find people to talk to. <laughs> Listen to me. Um, I love the actual the fans giving the pitches and telling us how they would do it, so that we can add a more comprehensive concept overall. Uh, I just feel like. People, when people think about remake this movie right, those teaser episodes in between seem like we could be spending time actually remaking another movie. So I don't know if that actually helps or hurts the overall scope of the show. I know there's a lot of people that like to hear the feedback, so maybe there's a different way that we could go about that in season three. I don't know. Or maybe we could do something like a like a best pitches, like all of the, like a, a mid season or a quarter or something. And just do like a, a quarter or mid-season pitches show of all the best fan pitches. Hmm. What about you, Wayne? What do you think? I'm in a similar camp as Troy. I do listen to the episodes and I love those as well. But I want to hear even more feedback. Listeners, be sure to come up with your own ideas. I know you've got them. So when you come up with your own pitches, be sure to send them to Aaron so they can be included in a feedback episode because that is the best part of those teaser feedback episodes is hearing some of these other people come up with sometimes some very fabulous ideas that I never would have thought of. Okay. Well, I'm going to weigh both of those and uh, <clears throat> it, it won't be decided right now. I think I want to get some time. Let's, I, I will be perfectly candid. A big reason why you haven't seen them in your feed for the last month and a half, I want to say, is A, I wanted to see if people would miss them if they weren't there. And uh, B, I'm just too busy, honestly, uh, with with this and Hollywood Outsider and then um, Beyond Westworld, the podcast uh, Troy and I do. And then The Blacklist as well. We were doing that one, too. So it was just way too much to try to. But, you know, I know there's some guys who do like seven or eight podcasts a week. God bless them. I don't know how they see their families or when they go to the bathroom or whatever, but at some point you need a break. And that's something I had to just fall through the cracks, I think, which should be solved pretty quick. And we're going to reevaluate and see how we do it going forward. But I definitely wanted your feedback. If you guys listen, have an opinion on that. Do you like the teaser episodes? Do you have an idea of a way you'd rather have them? Do you like maybe doing it as a best pitch con? competition or maybe even just have one teaser episode a month or something i don't know however you think that you we should do it email us remake this movie right at gmail.com let's remake this movie right at gmail.com and we'll figure it out before we start the new season you guys want to hear about some ones that we have planned for the next season next year yeah give us the i think i think that was a yes it was like a unison yes is what that was <laughs> We kind of decided that Stephen King seems to be a popular episode around here. People love the Stephen King episodes. So we're going to continue the tradition of kicking off the season, the next season, with a Stephen King episode, as of yet undetermined. But I will tell you that Wayne Henderson is on board. And, Absolutely. And I believe Troy Heinrichs will come on board. He hasn't been officially invited, but Troy, are you on board as well? Sure thing. You're being put under the under pressure here, so you have to commit. As, as long as we're not remaking Under the Dome, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to leave it in their hands to mull this over. They, they're they going to toss it back and forth between themselves. And then whatever movie they want to remake is the one we're going to do. So they're going to pick it. I don't even... I don't even care if it's something that it doesn't have a remake in the works or not. If If it's a Stephen King movie that's already been made that you think should be remade or could be done a lot better and you want to talk about that and why the original didn't work, that's the movie we should be making and it's going to be up to Troy and Wayne. So whatever that movie is, it's going to be theirs. But it will be a Stephen King movie and that'll be the kickoff episode of the next season. You guys got that? No pressure. Do you have any, do either one of you have ideas of ones that like just off the top of your head that you would think? Yes. Okay, I'm curious. I can't tell you now. Oh, you're going to hold it's gonna it. It's going to be a surprise. Oh, it's gonna We're be... going to mull it. All right, well, you mull it. Keep, keep I'm going to grow a mullet. If it happens to be a six, hour, a six hour one, make sure you give me time to actually watch it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, theoretically. 
Oh, so what you're saying is this actually has to have been a movie. We can't just like make a new one from a book that's no. like 4,400 pages long. Correct. Has to have been a movie already. Can't do Dark Tower. Okay. <laughs> can't do Dark Tower. We can talk about Dark Tower in the episode, but no, can't can't do that. It has to have already been a movie. Uh, some other ones that we're going to do, the the Batman. We're going to do a Batman episode. I, I will tell you that we're going to do that one a little different because we're going to have a caveat that Ben Affleck has to be Batman. So it's already cast. We're going to, because we're not going to do yet another Batman. Everybody's tired of that. So we're going to create what we think would be the perfect Batman movie, but we already know who our Batman is. So it kind of gives us a starting block. So there, there's that. I think that'll be fun. So you're uh, not remaking the original Batman with Michael Keaton with Ben Affleck? You're just creating <laughs> a brand new Batman? A brand new Batman movie. Yep. That's what we're going to do. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's new. It is it is new. It's a different kind of idea, a different way to do it. It's like, let's all get together, and everybody always says, I know how I would make a better whatever movie. I know how I would make a better Spider-Man movie. I know how I would make a better whatever movie. We're going to make a perfect Batman movie. That's the plan. I, I know some guys in some really deep comic book geek circles that hopefully are going to come on and put help put that thing together. Uh, Beauty and the Beast is a big one. We're going to be doing that. It's uh, a song as old as time. <laughs> The, beautiful is it song or tale as old as time probably i think it's both mm. it's been a while since i've seen them i've it's my it's on my plan to rewatch here over the uh, christmas break this is like a little backtrack and that's what it felt like um an american werewolf in london is on the on board mm. the birds the alfred hitchcock classic the birds that'll oh. be there that's one that'll really make me nervous because i'm a, a alfred hitchcock nut nine to five working nine we should do the five. birds then without you and then you could just sit there and listen and swivel and squirm in your chair the whole time we're doing it. Here's what it would be. Cut! 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 <laughs> cut! Cut! Uh, and lastly, Escape from New York. Ooh. Yeah. That's a big one. For me. Yeah, when that season, one... Without a Kurt Russell film. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> and when that one comes out, we are all going to do our best to make sure that Kurt Russell knows that this episode is out there. I know. This will be the third one for Kurt Russell. Yeah, but this is the most important one. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Snake Plissken. Yep. Snake Plissken's my, he's my boy, Blue. So all those Jack are subject. Jack Burton is rolling over in his grave at those words. <laughs> all those are subject to change, obviously, but that's within the pipeline as now. We would really like your ideas on what titles you'd like to see in 2017, uh, as well as thoughts on the podcast and what you'd like to see more or less of going forward. Remember to email us at remake this movie right at gmail.com. Once again, I want to say all, we're going to remake movies that are being remade. Yes. And we're also going to remake movies that are having a classic anniversary that maybe could be updated or modernized in some way. And also we're going to add to the mix movies that uh, just didn't work the first time, but we think we know how to make them right. So we're going to add a couple of those in the mix. So there's going to be a little bit more of a mix next season. I I think you guys are going to like it. I hope. Remember, January 30th, that's the return. Now let's get to our favorites. Now what we're going to do is we're going to... uh, Talk about the episodes that people that have hosted several times have deemed their favorites. That includes Amanda, who's been on several episodes. Zach, who's been on several episodes. Troy, who's been on many episodes. I think you've been on uh, you've been on the most. And then I'm going to give you my top three, and Wayne's going to give you his top three. Uh, Amanda, she said that her two favorite episodes of the season were the first one was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Did both of you guys listen to that one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Big Buffy fan. So what did you think of the remake, Troy? I thought it was pretty spot on. I think the the biggest thing with that movie was that it was just so campy and cheesy. And being able to figure out a way to work in some of the awesomeness of the television show into a a full length featured film, I think really, really helps the franchise because I would totally pay to see what you guys put out. Well, I don't want to get into any blasphemous territory here. Okay. I obviously I have listened to the episode. I don't remember a lot of the particulars, but I've never seen the original. What? What? So, dude. Oh. Okay. Wait. Now I'm losing geek cred left and right. Oh, wait, hang on. The movie or the TV show have you never seen? Neither. <gasps> oh, Wayne. Gasp. Yes. Wayne. Gasp. You know, I know I said I didn't want to open up any anything that might be close to blasphemy here. No, it's just shame. Shame. It is. Shame. A crying shame. shame. <laughs> That's right. You know what? You, you would not be the first, my friend. You would not be the first. 
that have I literally feel like it. Paul Rubens at the end of the movie now. <laughs> uh, that was a really fun episode. It ended up we we talked a lot about Buffy, so you learned pretty much all the yes, history. I, yeah, I think maybe maybe over Christmas break I'll have to uh, get Troy's recommendations of because Troy, as you know, always comes up with great ways where you can get caught up on stuff. And here's the list of the things you can skip and the things that are you must watch because that way you can get through one or two seasons in only seven episodes. <laughs> well, here is the the trailer for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And once again, I want to reiterate that I still maintain Christy Swanson. You are a better Buffy the Vampire Slayer than Sarah Michelle Gellar. That's right. I said it. And you got to listen just so you can hear Amanda go off about how Sarah Michelle Gellar never sent her an autograph back. And now she's still bitter about it. It's actually pretty funny. All right. <laughs> Here's the trailer for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. For centuries, vampires and the creatures of the night have secretly been a plague upon our world. Throughout all this time, there has always been one champion, one protector of the weak. They are known as Slayers. Buffy Summers just wants to be a normal girl, an average teenager. Unfortunately, after a Slayer is brought down in battle, Buffy is initiated as the chosen one to take on a new breed of evil that has now set its sights on her unsuspecting town of Sunnydale. Newly reunited with her estranged father, Merrick, who's also her watcher, but you didn't hear that from me, so shh. Buffy learns the ways of her newfound power, responsibility, and especially her destiny. Join writer, director Joss Whedon as he avoids yet another apocalypse by bringing his own creation back to the big screen. Eva Green and Kiefer Sutherland co-star, while Cinderella herself, Lily James, takes on the mantle of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in her wild reinvention of the timeless character. In every generation, there is a chosen one. She alone will stand against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness. She is the Slayer. Okay, man, the second pick of her favorite of the year was John Carpenter's Halloween. John Carpenter's Halloween. Uh, we actually had several people that said this was their favorite episode, which surprised me. I thought that was sacrilege to even try to remake it, but uh, people people liked it. Now, neither one of you guys are horror buffs. So when you're listening to one of those episodes for a movie you don't really get into, does it gel with you as much? Or is it just kind of like, well, it's just something to listen to? I like to get in the mood. So when I turn that one on, I made sure I got the lights off, lit a candle, kept it real nice and quiet in my house. No, you didn't. Did you really? (laughs) (laughs) You did not. You listen to every every podcast at two times speed. He doesn't do any of the stuff he says. No. Well, see that because I was running for my life. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Now, although I'm not a horror buff, when I was younger, which was back in the day when Halloween first came out, I did see that one in the theater. Mm. Now, he means course, the original Halloween, you know, holiday, not the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was there at the inception. <laughs> wow. The first. Wow, Troy. Um, thanks for that. No, the movie. Now, of course. You know, I was in high school. I mostly went because Jamie Lee Curtis was in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, but I do remember just the feel of that movie and how the original felt and the coloring and everything that was put to it. And it did pretty much creep me out that Mike Myers and some of the weird crap he did, so to speak. So I, I enjoyed the episode as well because it brought me back to seeing the original Halloween. I may have seen the second Halloween movie. I'm not sure, but I know I didn't see any of the others. You're okay. Trust me. You'll be fine. (laughs) You don't need to. Uh, Okay. Well, here's the trailer for John Carpenter's Halloween. Halloween night. A small Midwestern town. Six-year-old Michael Myers brutally murdered his sister. Fifteen years later, Michael is going home. A murder spree is about to begin in Haddonfield, and this is a different story than you've seen before. Someone is watching Lori and her friends. 
Someone is waiting in the shadows, and someone else isn't happy. Next October, grab your date's arm tight as director Jennifer Kent restores honor and horror to a timeless franchise. Halloween, the night he came home again. Okay, now we're moving on to Zach. Zach is our resident uh, comic book movie expert. He, at least, you know, that's what he calls himself. So it's self-appointed. I don't know if that matters, if he gets a card for that or whatever. But he he loves comic books. And his favorite movie comic book character, I believe, is Spider-Man. And we had him and Jeff Carter from GeekLeagueOfAmerica.com, who both came on and, and we put together a Spider-Man movie. And it was a really interesting dynamic because they see the world a little differently even though it's the same world. And I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. So you basically had three people who love Spider-Man putting this movie together. And I think it actually, it came out really, really good. Uh, Here's the trailer for Spider-Man. Living most of his life as an outsider, Peter Parker is starting to fit in. His job as a Daily Bugle photographer is going well. A new relationship is on the horizon. And his Aunt May remains a constant force keeping Peter grounded. For his alter ego, though, things just keep getting worse. After taking down another would-be assassin known as the Shocker, Spidey begins to sense a mysterious presence looming on the horizon. A new foe is lurking in the shadows, a kingpin mastermind who has his sights set on one singular mission. Kill Spider-Man. The hunter becomes the prey as Spider-Man faces down Kraven, the greatest threat he's ever known. Culminating in a heart-wrenching finale at Penn Station you won't want to miss. With a stellar cast that includes Devin Bostic and Viggo Mortensen and helmed by visionary director Brad Bird, face it, Tiger, we've hit the jackpot. Next summer, Marvel, as we take to the skyline to reinvent a comic book legend a hero who finally learns that with great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man. Okay, and Zach's next one was Blade. Blade. But before you, before you get into Blade, I swear I can still hear you guys arguing about organic versus mechanical. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth, back and forth. It was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's a very decision. Very important is what it is. And it was, yeah. Which which way did you lean? Which way did you land on it? I think if he gets bit by an organic spider, he's got to have organic webbing. But you know, he used web shooters in the in the comic book. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, there, there's an argument to be made. It's all I'm saying. There is. It's still going on in my head <laughs> with your voices at two X speed. <laughs> at two X speed. All right. Well, the next one is Blade. It just goes org mac org mac org mac. <laughs> this one was uh, I thought was a really fun episode uh, when we remade Blade because um, it, it's a movie I love. I actually absolutely love the original Blade series as a whole for the most part, but I love the original movie. And Wesley Snipes is that character. And this is the one where Zach actually introduced a a storyline, a twist on the storyline, which I thought was brilliant. And the fact that Wesley Snipes liked that, I'm telling you, I can't. That makes me happy. It just makes me smile. That I just pictured him doing his blade smile. You know, listen to the episode. That's what I pictured. Uh, but it was a really fun episode. We had a lot of fun with it, and the the story idea is actually really, I think, really smart. I, I just like Blade because of the uh, his ability to. Mimic Wesley Snipes. I mean, that is something that you dare not do for fear of Wesley Snipes actually breaking your neck in your sleep. So, so good attempt. Yes, very good attempt. And in the Spider-Man one, I believe you guys decided we don't need yet another Spider-Man origin story, correct? Correct. Because I think every person on this planet knows how he became Spider-Man. Yeah. So thank you for making sure we don't have to live through that again. <laughs> origin. Oh, okay. I thought you said orgy story, so that, I was confused. Oh, oh, oh Troy. Oh, Troy. <laughs> Please go back and listen to this episode because there is a point where I'm fairly certain Zach openly mocked Wesley Snipes, and I don't know. He either appreciated it or he was 
letting us know that he heard it. <laughs> I don't know. But either way, uh, it's, de- it's definitely there. But here's the trailer, the finished trailer for Blade. Let's cut to the trailer for my boy Wayne Henderson from MediaVoiceOvers.com. After a mother is freakishly attacked by a vampire upon the birth of her child, a new creature is conceived. This is not a man, nor a vampire. This is the Daywalker. He has all of a vampire's strengths, yet none of their weaknesses. Raised by his mentor, Whistler, this Daywalker has trained for decades for one sole purpose. To kill Dracula. Can the Daywalker take on the greatest vampire known to creation? Is he ready for the revelations that lie in wait if he does? Guillermo del Toro returns to give us all the Marvel anti-hero we deserve in a faithful update with a modern twist you'll never see coming. Next summer, finally find out why some mothers are always ice skating uphill. Idris Elba is... <laughs> I don't know which I like better. The trailer from Wayne. He which sounds Bravo, like Gus now. <laughs> Bravo, Wayne. Gus? Or the introduction. Some mother- <laughs> is always trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> you have to cut that. All right. And that brings us to Troy Heinrichs. Troy, tell us about your top two favorite episodes and introduce the trailers, please. Uh, I have way more than two, but I think these two trailers were fantastic from Wayne. So I picked these two specifically from the trailers. But all in all, I also thought that the Howling episode was a lot of fun with S.S. Wilson, as well as Logan's Run. We did that one with uh, Jason Cabassi from uh, the Walking Dead cast. Oh, that was great. Yeah, that was great. The the Logan's Run, I think, was just a really great conversation about concepts of of the 70s and free love and free drugs and all things people probably would wish they had today. And maybe with, you know, socialism coming to America, all that good stuff, it'll probably happen. I don't know, but it, it would be interesting to see if they could actually make a Logan's run two of some kind. I, I think, I think that's a, a story that needs to come back, uh, especially for today's population with the millennials and all of that stuff. I think it be, it would be something that would work. So I really enjoyed the Logan's run concept. Um, but you know, Got to give love to Westworld. It's kicking butt on HBO. It's fantastic. And I, I have to say, when we did the Westworld episode with Michael R. and Aaron, I think that we actually came up with some pretty interesting concepts in that movie that sort of are playing into the television show a little bit. I want So I'm wondering if the Nolans actually listened to us when they did those rewrites uh, after episode five. <laughs> yeah, because- I'm sure they did. I'm sure they gave two rats. They didn't give a rat's ass what we did. But I'll take the money. If they, HBO wants to write a check to shut us up, I'll take it. Absolutely. Uh, no, really great uh, stuff there, especially with uh, someone realizing they're not a host until, and then realizing they are a host. Uh, definitely you know, kind of playing into the, into the TV show a little bit. So I, I think that was fantastic. And uh, Michael R. was just great to have on. Um, really brought a, a different kind of energy uh, to the podcast. Uh, we got a lot of new voices this year, so I thought that was absolutely fantastic. So without further ado, here is... Westworld. Dallas is the vacation of the future today. Have you ever dreamt of a life as a cowboy in the Old West? Maybe you envisioned yourself as more of an outlaw, on the run, and always living in the moment. Welcome to Dallas, and boy, have we got a vacation for you. Here in the Westworld section of Dallas, you can live your life just as those gunslingers did at the beginning of civilization. You can even meet fellow travelers like Peter Martin. Peter's a nice guy and a first-timer here at Westworld, and you can just tell by looking at him what a great time he's having at the park. Wait, are his eyes glowing? Nah. You also have season ticket holders like John Blaine here. John has seen all there is to see at Westworld proper, so he's taking advantage of our advanced virtual reality capabilities and going even further into the reality. Everyone loves Dallas, and Westworld is the number one attract... Guys? What was that screaming? Sorry about that. Where was I? Right, right. Everyone loves Dallas and our number one attraction. So next summer, pack your bags and come on over to Westworld. Before we come for you. 
And I have to say, I, I love when Wayne's just like, did you see that? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> of the all the trailers, I really felt a lot of pressure with the Westworld trailer because I knew that the TV series was about to launch. The podcast was about to blow up. And we, I better do this as, as good as possible and nail it. I have to say, I looked behind me when you said, hey, what was that? <laughs> and, well, and Aaron... I want to I want to make sure to add that you did a great job of imitating. A lot of people don't even realize when they hear it, because now everybody's familiar with the TV show. They're not as familiar with the original movie. He does a great interpretation of that original opening to the movie, which is what he's trying to emulate throughout that trailer. And it just it just it's great. I just loved it. Thank you. You did a great job. And thanks for all the production work that you put into the trailers, because I can't wait to hear what kind of pauses you're going to build in sound effects, music. And it, it always is even better when, it, when you've got it all the way finished. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Second one then is uh, of course the one that all three of us were on. That is Stephen King's it. I don't know how many times you could get three of us together and try to avoid talking about, 12 year old sexcapades <laughs> <laughs> as much as we try to on this podcast. I, it, it's a vital part of the book and actually drives a lot of the story in the book. So to be able to create a trilogy of all things out of this uh, franchise, this one gigantic evil menace and not have a 12 year old sex romp. I think that that is a, a feat unto itself, but really, really excited about how we broke out this one into it's three components of focusing on the kids and their parents and then the kids as adults and trying to rec- you know, avoid the mistakes that their parents had made and just some of the visual concepts that we came up with in there. Uh, the AV Club, when Podmas was still around in the AV Club, I actually really liked this episode too. Um, I think that was really a, a big hit for us. So without further ado, here is Wayne doing Stephen King's It. <laughs> Thirty years ago, Stephen King unleashed a new breed of horror on the world as he taught us the only thing more terrifying than a killer clown are the fears that lie within ourselves. The nightmare is real as director Frank Darabont unveils the first in a trilogy of his adaptation of Stephen King's It. What is happening to the children of Derry? Who is the mysterious clown known as Pennywise? Can a small gang of quote-unquote losers fight back this very definition of evil? Three films spanning 60 years will tell the tale of Derry's ongoing terror. Join us next summer as our lovable losers band together to confront this unseen evil, culminating in an epic battle of the ages against their fiercest enemy, themselves. This is horror. This is fear. This is Stephen King's It. (laughs) Also, turtles. There will be turtles. The AV Club was, was great. It's a huge website. So to be uh, profiled by them uh, for that episode, that was greatly appreciated. If if they're listening still, I don't know. The All right, so it's my top three, and then we're going to get to Wayne. My top three, I will try to keep this succinct. The Howling, that's when S.S. Wilson, uh, he's come by several times. I mentioned earlier, uh, writer of Tremors, writer of Short Circuit. He's done many, many films in the entertainment industry, and I just love talking to him. He, he's... A very nice guy. I've come to call him a friend and uh, just love every time he stops by. And the fact that he's willing to come by once or twice a year for this show is is even better. So The Howling was one where he he wanted to tackle a horror movie. And he felt that there were other ways to do it other than the way that they had gone. So he came on and uh, Troy and I had a great conversation. And I think what came out was a very spooky, creepy interesting movie that i would love to see i actually would love to see it it was time period relevant too which was great so we're able to actually make a horror movie in modern day and still have that creepy 70s 80s feel to it very much yeah absolutely very much so without further ado here is the trailer for the howling 
desperate for respectability, Karen is an internet journalist with a lead. Journeying into the shadows, Karen narrowly escapes the jaws of a sadistic killer. Unable to shake the trauma of her brush with death, she agrees to take part in a remote support group based in the Washington countryside. Terry is an avid fan who becomes obsessed with Karen's recent disappearance and sets out on a hunt of her own. Terry soon learns the truth about Karen's new friends, and if she cannot convince her in time, Karen may just prove to be the next victim for this coven of werewolves. Join us this fall as director Joe Dante harkens back to an era where monsters were truly terrifying as he reimagines his own horror classic for a new generation. Stay still. Be quiet. Did you hear that? It's the howling. Okay, I had a blast. Now, going from that to a lot of fun. Uh, Charlie's Angels is one I did with Angela and Amanda. <laughs> that was, I, it was just fun. It was just a lot of goofy, giggling ridiculousness as we came up with this movie and talked about the original movie as well as the series some. And, uh, it was just, it was just one of those episodes where I just had a really good time. I don't even care what it sounded like cause I had a good time with it. And that made it a really fun episode for me. Because just talking to those ladies and, and their moment where they go, oh, thank you, Aaron, it's just, it just makes me, I couldn't stop laughing. Uh, I, just, I just had a blast. I just had a blast. And Wayne did a great trailer and doing his best Bosley impersonation. And uh, <laughs> take a listen without further ado. And if you like the trailer, please go check the episode. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And here's the trailer for Charlie's Angels. Good morning, Angels. Good morning, Charlie. Once upon a time, there were three beautiful and intelligent women who graduated from the police academy. They each had some very hazardous duties and planned to protect and serve in modern law enforcement. But I took them away from all that. Now they work for me. My name is Charlie. Their first case came to us from an old friend of mine, the governor of New York. He is worried that the woman competing for his seat in the next election is up to something horrible. My angels will get to the bottom of it, hopefully before tragedy strikes on New Year's Eve. Open your arms to a new trio of angels as Lily James, Brie Larson, and Lupita Nyong'o bring the CNA back to the movie screen. This time, our Bosley will be disguised as none other than Robert Downey Jr. as he helps our angels bring down the fearsome foursome of Meryl Streep, Haley Atwell, Kristen Ritter, and Sam Rockwell as Derek Box. That's right, Derek Box. Totally different guy than last time. Don't miss the case coming later this summer as my girls take ass-kicking to the next level. Charlie's Angels. Wait, what happened? Quality control? Okay. Apparently, Helen Mirren will be taking over my duties as Charlie. It's been real, kids. Hoo-hoo! Wayne, do you remember that one? Yes, I do. I had to channel my inner Bosley. That was a lot of fun, and it brought me back to the original TV series from when I was a kid, and you know, Farrah Fawcett and all the rest. And she's driving that white Mustang with the blue stripe down the middle. Oh, yeah, that good was times. Good. I like that show. Uh, my last one, my my favorite of the year was Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, and I say fair, favorite of the year because. Troy had already taken it, and Wayne had already taken Independence Day. So this is my favorite of those. Uh, I, I had a blast on this. I think the episode ended up being a lot of fun. Brian and Amanda and I, I just had a lot of fun with a with a concept that I didn't think was going to work. It was one of those movies where we did it just because it coincided with Ferris Bueller's anniversary. 
uh, this past year, and I thought it would be fun to just, you know what, could you remake Ferris Bueller for a modern day? Could you reboot it? And I think we came up with a really fun idea. And actually, by the end of it, a movie I didn't think was possible to remake, I wanted to see that movie. And if you listen to the episode, it has a, a I thought a really funny, I thought, well, I thought I did it, so I, I guess I'm probably biased, but there's a nice homage to the actual end of the original movie at the very end of that podcast, which I thought was very funny. Uh, much like we did with the Clue episode where we had, <laughs> where we had a, another ending or whatever. Another trailer at the end of that one. So um, it's just a lot of fun. Be sure to check that episode out. But here's the trailer for Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ferris Bueller is the most popular kid in school. Every girl wants to date him. And every guy wants to be him. As he closes in on the end of his senior year, he finally decides to take a break. Grabbing his closest friends, Ferris sets out to have the greatest day of ditching school in San Francisco's history if his uptight dad doesn't bust him first. Join Taryn Edgerton as he grabs the baton from Matthew Broderick in Paul Feig's reimagining of the John Hughes classic. 30 years ago, one man just needed to have some fun. Next summer, his son takes it to the next level. This is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, yeah. Okay, and now we are at the Maestro's Final Three. This is where Wayne Henderson, courtesy of MediaVoiceOvers.com, tells us what his three favorite either episodes or trailers, however you do it, your three favorites of 2016, season two of Remake This Movie Right, what they are, and you introduce the tra- your own trailers. This is meta, very meta. So, <laughs> Pressure's really on for this one. Now, of course, Troy already picked my favorite episode of the whole year, the Stephen King's It, because I want to see the movies that we came up with for that trilogy. And if by some chance the uh, director can't make it through all the way to that final one, you know, I'm kind of holding on to that M. Night Shyamalan uh, carrying the grand finale of the trilogy, but you're going to get him in one of these movies someday. I swear you are. You really are. (laughs) And then you might regret it. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe, maybe he'll do nine to five. We'll see, but that's funny. So with that, we'll go with my (laughs) top three trailers. And I, We'll first go with Twister because, Aaron, your script it just gave me all sorts of creative freedom just to be loud. It had lots of action. The <laughs> urgency levels were up and down throughout it because it was building, building. And the fact that you let me say, what in the hell is a twine tornado and all in 3D? <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. And. I, I have fond memories of the original movie, and that was just a fun trailer to do. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I still, and for a fun fact, I think that is our shortest remake episode ever. Twister was? Yeah, we got to the we got to that movie like phew, we were done. Like everybody agreed to everything, and it was hey, that was easy. Yeah, why can't Hollywood do that? Why do they keep messing things up? Good question. So here's me, <laughs> Wayne Anderson, with the trailer imagining of Twister done right. Here's me. (laughs) After tragedy takes his wife, Bill dedicates his life to saving others from the same fate. Reuniting with his partner, Joe, a fellow storm chaser, Bill believes he might have the key to an early warning. What he doesn't know is that Bill's teenage son, Philip, has devised something greater, a scientifically enhanced drone that could potentially kill the very vortex of a tornado. It's a race against time as the largest weather front that Doppler has ever seen is brewing and the clock is, you know, ticking. Join director Colin Trevorrow as he brings a 90s classic roaring back to the screen and get ready for the most exhilarating tornado effects you have ever imagined in 3D. There will be water tornadoes. There will be fire tornadoes. There will be twine tornadoes. Wait. What the hell is a twine tornado? It doesn't matter because this movie is going to blow you right past the Fujita scale with a whirlwind of destruction. 
next summer. Find a safe room and strap in. A storm is coming. Twister. All right, what's your number two now? That was a great trailer. What's your number two? And, and by the way, Twister is number three. Going in reverse order like everybody likes to do. Number two for me was the trailer for Ghostbusters because we already knew that there was some uh, controversy around the remake that was about to come out to the theaters, but we had great timing. You guys did a, a good episode remaking Ghostbusters the right way, and that's why you have the Remake This Movie Right podcast. <laughs> and this was another fun trailer to do for lots of reasons, and I love the original Ghostbusters. I, I think it's almost in do, t- do not touch status, <laughs> but the fact... <laughs> I think it's the first time ever in any voice work of any kind I've ever done where I've had one of my words bleeped out. So <laughs> it was, that, that word was Lake Pontchartrain, right? Lake Pontchartrain, man. You have to be careful how you say it. So having that uh, bleeped out in the trailer, good times. So <laughs> without further ado, here's Wayne Henderson for MediaVoiceOvers.com, reimagining Ghostbusters. In 1984, four New Yorkers took the spirit world by storm and proved to us all that ghosts definitely do exist. Over three decades have passed and the former glory of Ghostbusters franchises across the country have started to fade. With most of the slimy specters now off the grid, things have almost gotten back to normal. That is, until a Bermuda cruise ship suddenly disappears from the ocean and somehow miraculously reappears smack in the middle of Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana, while ghosts worldwide all converge on the local Myrtle's plantation and a mysterious businessman uses a local do-gooder to shut down the global containment systems housed at the Ecto Grouping Oversight Network nearby, Jay Stance teams up with Hannah, their local franchisee, and even brings Winston back into the fold to chase down the truth behind how big this Twinkie of Terror really is. Trust us, it's a big ass Twinkie. There's something spooky going on here. Real Wrath of God type stuff, as our heroes inevitably learn of the ancient evil about to drop a battle of the undead deep in the heart of the bayou. Will the Ghostbusters be enough to stop hell on Earth? Prepare to feel so funky as Jason Sudeikis and Kristen Bell slap unlicensed nuclear accelerators on their backs in director John Favreau's reimagined vision of the greatest supernatural crime fighters the underworld has ever seen. This summer, there's only one question you need to ask yourself. Did I remember to turn off the gas stove at home? No, not that question. You need to ask yourself... Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters! Oh, that's good times. Now I want a Twinkie. That's true. Hungry. <laughs> Dessert. <laughs> so good. So, and coming in at number one for season two of Remake This Movie Right, Wayne's number one trailer that was fun to do, Independence Day. Yeah. Now, this one is not technically a trailer, but I love the direction that you guys went with your movie, especially compared to what I heard about the actual movie that was made. But the fact that instead of a trailer, you, Aaron, gave me the tall task of trying to recreate the presidential speech that is so iconic from the original Independence Day movie. And this is another one where I felt a lot of pressure because I'm like, that's not really a trailer trailer. And I got to even try to be 5% of the original presidential speech from Independence Day, but whether was, or not we succeeded with that impersonation. No, it was great. It was, yes. it was absolutely great because you, you know, the, the trick to that was I, with that movie, if you're going to have fun with it, why wouldn't you do the most, one of the most famous speeches in history? A trick to writing it is just trying to build, take that speech and actually put in the elements of our movie, which are in there. They are, they are in there. 
And um, and then you delivered it, and it sounded just like a, the damn speech. It just sounded great, and I'm just listening. I'm like, you nailed it. I really didn't think it was going to work at all, and and you nailed it. You did a great. Well, <laughs> oh, that's why I, you had me do it. <laughs> honestly, it sounded better. I mean, it it is the. I, my daughter listens to it over and over again and compares it to the movie's really? version, and she's like, "Wayne's is so much better. Why didn't they put Wayne in the movie?" <laughs> I'm open to that kind of stuff. Just contact me at mediavoiceovers.com. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, Aaron, thank you for having me go way outside my comfort zone and try something totally new and different. And yes, the final product that you're about to hear with Aaron's uh, music and the sounds, that's what really uh, brings it to life and puts it all together and gets you in the mood for the right way to do Independence Day. Here it is. Next summer, <clears throat> next summer, invaders from another world are coming to ours with one mission. Destroy all life on our planet. Turning our own technology against us, these aliens will appeal to our basic human nature to seek peace. Believing their intentions are real, much of the human race will flock to a perfect trap, being wiped out in an instant. Those of us remaining will be forced to rely on our basic knowledge and skills to survive, eventually joining others from around the world in mounting the largest ground battle in the history of mankind. Mankind. That word should have new meaning for us all after this day. But we won't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. Three conflicting countries will unite the world for our common interests. Perhaps it's fate that this will release on the 4th of July, and we will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We will be fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win that day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day the world declared in one voice. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Next July, we're remaking our Independence Day. Oh, that was great. That was great. And by the way, um, I don't think Aaron's music had anything to do with that. That was all the presentation, sir. That was a, Thank you. I felt like President Mitchell was there. I like how in the original podcast episode at the end of the trailer, you guys were talking about how you were inspired. <laughs> we were. I've done my job. It's got the feels. I tell you that much. It is. Made me. I, was in, I am inspired. I'm going to go listen to it again. And it is the one that I spent the most time recording. Really? Just because you were, were you nervous about getting that one wrong? Exactly. <laughs> I did not want to let you and the listeners down. I did not want to be a laughing stock from that one. Well, we were at the annual podcast conference, podcast movement uh, here in Chicago this past year. And when we were shopping, remake this movie right around the conference to people, like, hey, have you heard this podcast? All we did was play the Independence Day trailer. Nice. We shopped the podcast. So it, it's become like now the flagship trailer for, for the show. Maybe I should put that in a, uh, what is it, clamor. <laughs> put it in a clamor yeah. and, and spread it around. That's what we need to do. Um, uh, interspread with a periodic big-ass Twinkie and <laughs> in 3D. <laughs> the big-ass Twinkie. Yes, rabid baboons. Oh. <laughs> and as we close this thing out, um, what do you think of the show this season versus last season? Well, I mean, we always started out the thing with, a, you know, add a, a dash of humor to it. And I think that when we first started out, we were really trying to be kind of a little bit too humorous, a little bit off the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when we finally found out that, you know, really what we want to do is we want to make the best movie possible because this is our childhoods that we're messing with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once we settled into that groove, I think that was what really took it up a notch. And, and getting some newer voices in the second season, I think, really took it to another level. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing if we can actually convince some more uh, Hollywood type writers to come in and, and add some flair to it. Uh, we, we, we've made some connections 
uh, via Blacklist and some of our other podcasts. So we we have a network that we could reach out to. So it'd be great to see if we can have that happen in season three because I think that would add another another level up, another little bit of flair. Uh, but yeah, just um, really taking it seriously. And yeah, some of these movies are, you know, actually pitch worthy, I think. And maybe we have to figure someone out that can do that for us. I like that. What about you, Wayne? Uh, what have you seen? Because you've listened to all of them and you've done all the trailers. What have you seen from the first season to now? I think it's the behind the scenes stuff that you and the others are doing leading up to making the episodes that uh, Troy talked about how they've grown. I think uh, screening out and emphasizing to everybody that wants to be on the podcast, because I know I saw it in my emails, that if you're going to do this episode, we need you to really um, have a lot of praise and uh, almost some sort of reverence for the original. Don't just come on the show to come on the show Mm -hmm. and go through the motions and then have it turn out to be either boring or ridiculous. You know, really come in with the thought, like Troy mentioned, that you want to remake this movie right. That was really the mantra for season two is, because the first season we did have a lot of people that just, we wanted to do the show and they were trying to have a good time, but I think you can always tell when somebody doesn't really care about the original movie or doesn't believe that it can be remade. Either one of those things and you have, it can be an episode killer. I mean, it can be fixed with editing, but there's only so much magic that can be done. And that was a big part of part of season two. And it ended up being a really fun season uh, with, uh, like Troy said, a lot of really varied voices. We had a lot of varied voices. Um, Brian kind of retired from podcasting, but he, he came on. Stephen King's Mist, that was the last one, I think. And that was a great episode. Uh, but we had Brian on. We had Jason Cabasi from the Walking Dead cast. We had Rob Southgate from Southgate Media Group. Uh, we've had several other people, just a, a ton of people. Michael R. from Den of Geek came on. Just a lot of great people have come by to enjoy the idea, the concept of remaking a movie they love and trying to do that thing that we all do when we're sitting around you know, with other friends and just I, having that idea. You know, how would we do it? Hollywood keeps screwing it up. How would we do this movie? You know, it's like Monday morning quarterbacking uh, with the movie. And I think it's turned out to be a lot of fun. The direction it's going seems to continuously improve. So we're going to keep doing it. And I hope everybody's really enjoying it. And next season, I think is going to be even better. We've got some cool ideas for some movies that we're going to do. Please remember January 30th, we'll be returning with season three of remake this movie, right? Anything you guys want to say, Wayne or Troy in closing where people can find you or just anything about the podcast itself. Wayne's the man of the hour. So I yield the floor to you, sir. I am just uh, thankful to be a part of the Remake This Movie Right podcast. I really, truly am. And Aaron, thank you for reaching out back when you started the very first season to see if I wanted to play around and do these trailers. And I look forward to getting the script, looking it over and recording it, and then hearing how the final episode sounds with the uh, production in the trailer, as well as the story elements that everybody puts together. I myself enjoy it. I want to thank you for having me on. I look forward to seeing what kind of wackiness is going to happen in season three, as well as what sort of ultra ominous episodes you might have near the Halloween season. So I'm staying tuned. You can find me at MediaVoiceOvers.com, as well as the on the Packers fan podcast devoted to your 13 time NFL champion Green Bay Packers. Not this year. All right. <laughs> what about- oh, wow. Hey, it could still happen. Over yet. Yeah, that's right. That's going to be a tight cord. That's a tight fit. Uh, I've just had a blast uh, being on the first two seasons and can't wait to do season three. Um, as Wayne mentioned, of course, PackersFanPodcast.com. If you are a fan of the green and gold, uh, Aaron and I are wrapping up or have wrapped up by the time you hear this uh, season one of Westworld. That is beyond WestworldPodcast.com. You definitely want to check that out. Join our Facebook group out there. It is crazy how many people want to talk about this show, and you could be one of them, so definitely check that out if you have not. And then uh, Aaron and I will be back January 5th. uh, Actually, the 7th is our actual podcast comeback day uh, for The Blacklist Exposed. uh, Kicking off uh, the second half of Season 4, it's going to be fantastic. That's at theblacklistexposed.com, so be sure to check us out. So many podcasts. (laughs) So many. Yeah, Beyond Westworld has been nuts. Uh, yeah, if you, if you are just now getting into that HBO show or maybe you're going to pick up the DVDs when you hear this, I don't know. But if you like that and you want to just talk or hear all the crazy theories 
as you watch it. Watch an episode, then listen to the podcast. It's, it's quite a, a blast. Uh, BeyondWestworldPodcast.com. Also, like you said, The Blacklist. And The Hollywood Outsider. That's the network that bases for all this. And uh, there's an episode of that show every single week, so you don't have to wait to hear that. Just go to thehollywoodoutsider.com. Uh, there's an app. There's a Google and an Apple app. There's also, you, we're on Spotify for that show. Remake is movie, right? Still not on Spotify. We're waiting. They're pretty selective, man. I don't know. I guess you gotta be special, which means Hollywood Outsider special remake. Uh, it's not as special, I guess. Maybe if we have more reviews, guys. Hint, hint. Uh, you can always find us at remakeismoviewrite dot com. We're on Twitter at remake right. Uh, remake is movie right at gmail dot com is the email address. And as we wrap this up, I had an email from a Miss Sherry, who apparently is a fan of both Remake This Movie Right and The Hollywood Outsider, who asks, and I quote. Aaron, I love your show, but I'm also a big fan of The Hollywood Outsider, which you often rap upon. Uh, I do bad raps, Fury. That's what I do. So I was kind of disappointed when it came to the rap section of Men in Black, and I did not hear your vocal stylings. Instead, I hear Wayne, who did a great job, but he was so Caucasian. <laughs> so if I could ask one thing as you wrap your season up, please give me my Men in Black rap. Okay, Sherry, well, since you asked, uh, and we are wrapping this year up, that's fine. As we head out into the 2017 horizon, I am going to remake Wayne's trailer. Not necessarily right, but you're going to find out exactly how hard it is for him to do these things. As I'm going to do my own remake of Wayne Henderson's Men in Black trailer. Remember that your favorite film will get a reboot someday, and together, we can remake this movie right. Have a great year and a great holiday, guys. We'll see you January 30th. Here they come, y'all. Here they come, y'all. Here they come, y'all. The shady guys dressed in black, remember that. Just in case we ever face to face to make contact. The title held by me, MIB, means man in black. Don't misunderstand me. We look in shadows and move in silence. Guarding against extraterrestrial and supernatural violence. New partners up, a new guy, Jay. He's about to find out he got played. Saw something strange, but didn't watch his back. That's a mistake, y'all. Cause you never know where the M my B is at. Oh, here to come. Here to come. Beast with his head and hands in front of me. A doula hand, which I saw, they did not see. The regular peep zoom in on the impending doom, but then boom, black suits fill the room. We use Jay to ditch the threat, then cast him back. This use is spent. Hypnotizer, neuralizer. Jay's memories turn to fantasies. Ain't no MIBs, again I please. Do what we say, that's the way we kick it. And if you stay after the credits, you'll know we're crooked. We're still your first, last, and only line of defense against the worst creatures in the universe. So don't fear us, cheer us, even Jet thinks we're still fearless. WBB is what remakes leaving you with as we fade to black. Now, we'll be back. I said, now, we'll be back. January 30th, 2017. Wait, you're still here? The podcast is over. Go home.